This is the next lesson for the Bible Institute, and we've made it to the tribulation, the Daniel's 70th week. And the title of this dispensation is the Dispensation of Judgment. God is going to primarily be judging the nation of Israel, but also the Roman Catholic Church and the other nations. But primarily it's for the, a judgment for the nation of Israel. The length of this time period is around seven years. Beginning after the rapture of the church. Maybe not right after the rapture of the church. Because there could be some years of transition into the tribulation. But it begins after, sometime after the rapture of the church. And it ends with the second coming of the Lord Jesus. When we come back with him on white horses. And man's responsibility during this time is to have the testimony of Jesus Christ and not take the mark of the beast. Man's failure during this time is man doesn't repent even during all the things that God brings on the earth. Instead, they blaspheme him. He rains hell down, they blaspheme him because of the plague of the hell. They just continue to Worship their gods of silver and their gods of gold that can't see and hear or walk. Even with all the visible things that clearly point to the Bible being true, God being true, they still reject God. And then the judgment is Israel is judged. That's why part of it's called the time of Jacob's trouble. Also, the great whore, the Roman Catholic Church, will be judged. And concerning her judgment, it says in Revelation 18.10, it says in one hour is thy judgment come. And the nations, of course, will be judged at the second coming. Read about the judgment of the nations in Matthew 25. And some facts about this time of the tribulation, this time of judgment, is this time period comes on the nation of Israel because of their rejection of Jesus Christ. And this time period is for the purpose of the restoration of the nation of Israel, which will happen when Jesus Christ comes back. You see, he's going to bring them back to him. In Revelation 7, you see there are 12,000 from each tribe of Israel who are called out. And they are male Jewish virgins who are sealed in their foreheads. And these are the 144,000. Notice a huge difference than what you're dealing with today. Because today, when we get saved, according to Galatians 3.28, we're neither Jew nor Greek. But in the tribulation, it goes God back to dealing with a race of people, the nation of Israel. And this shows the body of Christ won't be going through the tribulation. Because today, a saint in Christ is neither Jew nor Greek. You get into the book of Revelation and the tribulation, he's talking about sealing 144,000 male Jewish virgins. So you see the difference. And our individual sins, mine and your individual sins, have already been judged on the cross. I'm not going to be judged for any sins anymore. But this future time of judgment is a judgment on a nation. And it has nothing to do with the church. And most of the Bible, God is dealing with Israel. And there is a lot of Gentiles who hate that. There are a lot of Baptists who hate that. You see, what's going on is in the book of Genesis, he was formulating the nation of Israel. You get to Exodus, he's calling out the nation of Israel. With David and Solomon, he was establishing the nation of Israel. Then you get to the end of Solomon's reign, and it's, you see it start to be a demise. And through the kings of Israel and Judah, you see the demise of the nation of Israel all the way down to their destruction of the nation of Israel with Nebuchadnezzar. And in the Gospels, you see Israel reject Jesus Christ. And in Acts, you see them reject him the last time with the stoning of Stephen. Now, in this present age we're in, the church age, they're on the back burner. And even in this time, me and you, the body of Christ, the church, are just God's way to provoke Israel to jealousy. You know, a lot of Gentiles, a lot of people hate that. 
We're just to provoke Israel to jealousy. If God is no longer interested in Israel, then why is he trying to make them jealous? Just like back when you was a teenager, you would see uh, people dating and stuff. Maybe they would break up and then one of them would date this other person just to provoke the other one to jealousy because they were still interested in that other person that they used to date. You see, if, if he's provoking Israel to jealousy, that means he's still interested in them. So in the tribulation, he's judging Israel and he's judging them and putting, through them, putting them through trouble to bring them back. And you see it just like in the book of Judges, uh, he would raise up an enemy against them. They would cry unto him, and, and he would send them a deliverer. And he did that over and over again. And during the church age, we look to the man Christ Jesus, who's fully God and fully man. During the tribulation, the counterfeit shows up. He's the man of sin. Unlike our God, the man Christ Jesus, this guy's the man of sin. And you see, Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. And the Antichrist is the man of sin. And he's Satan manifested in the flesh. And don't forget, Genesis 3.15 said the devil has a seed. The Antichrist is going to be an amazing counterfeit, just as Jesus Christ is the mystery of godliness, according to 1 Timothy 3.16. The Antichrist is the mystery of iniquity, according to 2 Thessalonians 2. So there are different names for this time period. While we call it the tribulation, that is not the actual title. It's more, that's more of a description. Notice in Matthew 24, 29, it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Notice it doesn't say immediately after the tribulation shall the sun be darkened. If it did, that would sound more like it was the title for the time period. It says immediately after the tribulation of those days. You see, there's tribulation in those days, but the tri tribulation isn't the actual title. Now, the Christian will face tribulation in the day and age we are in today. But that doesn't mean we're going through this future time period that most people refer to as the tribulation. And I'm not against referring to it as the tribulation. That's what it's widely known as. So you may hear me call it that but it's more of a description of that future time and not a title. And the Bible names for this time period is the time of trouble or the time of Jacob's trouble or Daniel's 70th week. And what you're going to see is a false peace, a false kingdom of the Antichrist. So let's break this time period down, examine it, and I don't believe you can get it in 100% chronological order, but we can try our best to get it in somewhat chronological how the events are going to lay out and take place. But for the most part, just go over what happens and takes place during this future time. Okay, let's, let's look at it. Tribulation, the tribulation, Daniel's 70th week. And you can, you, br you can break it down into two times of three and a half years. The first three and a half years, you can call it the beginning of sorrows. And the, the definitive chapter, I believe, on the tribulation is Matthew 24. When you go to Matthew 24, you're, you're going to see the Lord Jesus Christ himself break this time period down. And he said, look at Matthew 24. I'll give you time to go to it. I hope you'll read it and follow along. In Matthew 24, in verse 3, it says, And as Jesus sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So there's your context. Context. He's going to tell them 
what shall be the sign of his coming and of the end of the world. And then he start, he's going to get into all the things that's going to happen during that future time. And look at verse 5. He says in verse 5, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And that's what you can title the first part of the tribulation. That future time period is the beginning of sorrows. And you're going to find that Matthew 24 will match the events in the book of Revelation. See what we just read? That's going to match events that you're going to see in Revelation. Now, we're going to turn and look at Revelation chapter 6. And in Revelation, it gives four or five different accounts of the tribulation time period. And in Revelation chapter 6, you see the first seal. The first seal that will happen at the beginning of the tribulation. And if you want to write this down, the first seal has to do with the Antichrist, who's the man of sin, the son of perdition, also called the mystery of iniquity, the little horn, and the beast. And he shows up on a white horse, and he does this to counterfeit the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is the beginning of the Antichrist's false kingdom. Revelation 6, 1 through 2. And it says, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow. So you see, we're already seeing a difference. He's got a bow. Jesus Christ has a sword. And it says, And a crown was given unto him. There's another distinction. This Antichrist right here, he's got a crown. The Lord Jesus Christ has many crowns when he shows up on a white horse. And it says, And he went forth conquering and to conquer. And here you see the Antichrist is trying to set up his false kingdom. He's wanting to be the greatest. Even though he comes in peaceably at first, he's going to have to knock some guys off to get to the top. That's what's going on here. He's a counterfeit Christ. And he has forerunners paving the way for him right now. And you know, it talks about the mystery of iniquity in 2 Thessalonians 2, 7. It says, the mystery of iniquity doth already work. The spirit of the Antichrist is already at work right now, preparing people for him to show up. This is why John in 1 John 2, 18 says, even now are there many Antichrists. You see, there's many Antichrists, but there's one, the Antichrist. Also, this is why Jesus said in Matthew, notice I told you that it's, it's going to line up with Matthew 24. Remember, we just read in Matthew 24, 4, he said, many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You see, that's what the Antichrist is. He's a false Christ. And in Daniel eleven twenty one, 21, it says, he, he shall come in peaceably. Also, he will make a covenant with the Jewish people for seven years, and he will break the covenant in the middle of those seven years. And Daniel 9, 27, it says, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. In one week, in the Bible, that doesn't always just mean seven days. That can mean seven years. And that's what this uh, is referring to here. It's seven years. He confers the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, after about three and a half years, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So a week referring to seven years, in the middle of those seven years, He'll cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. So he breaks the covenant in the middle of the seven years. So the covenant only lasts about three and a half years. So you see, he has a covenant with Israel. 
You know, that's why it says in Isaiah, with death and hell, they were at, or they're at agreement. But then in the midst of the week, he breaks the covenant, and then he goes against Israel. Also, you're going to see the 144,000 are sealed. And some people put this in the second half of the trib. Some people put it at the in the first half. And you know, it's... I don't believe you can just nail it down, these things down 100%, but it looks like the 144,000 are sealed during the first half of the tribulation that we're talking about right now. And it says in Revelation 7, 2 through 4, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees that we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And it says in Revelation 14, 4, talking about the 144,000, These are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. So these are the true 144,000 that people like the Jehovah's Witnesses pretend to be. But the 144,000, they're at a completely different time period. That's not today. That's not in the church age. That's a future tribulation. You see, it can't be Jehovah's Witnesses. These are male Jewish virgins. And on top of that, they live in a completely different time period. Also notice they are sealed in their forehead. A born-again believer isn't just sealed in their forehead. Showing you this is a completely different class of saints. But these men will preach during the time period of the of the Daniel 70th week. They aren't church-age saints. Okay, now you're going to look at the second seal. The first seal was the Antichrist showing up on a white horse, coming forth to conquer and uh, conquering and to conquer to set up his false kingdom. Now with the second seal, you got the red horse. In Revelation 6, 3 through 4, it says, And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that set their own to take peace from the earth, and, they th and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So this is war right here. The red horse is war. That's the second seal. First seal was the man of sin, the Antichrist showing up. Second seal is war. And, you know, it's going to go hand in hand with the Antichrist because he's going to have to make war to conquer. And even though he comes in peaceably, he's going to have to knock off some guys that ain't going to let him come in peaceably. That ain't going to let him rule the world, you see. And this, once again, will match Ma Matthew 24 that we just read, this red horse, which is war. Because what did Jesus say in Matthew 24, 6? He says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So this is a bloody time. It's a red horse. Many men will have to go to war, so many people will be killed by other people. Not just in war, but on the streets. Lots of killing going on. And in Matthew 24, 12, it says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. It's going to be a bloody time. Now, look at the third seal. The third seal is the black horse. This will be famine. And in Revelation 6, 5, it says, And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. So you see this third seal, the black horse. This is about famine. And those balances, that refer, that's referring to measuring food. And it says in Matthew 24, 4 through 8. For nation shall rise against nation, 
and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginnings of sorrows. So you see how math, the beginning part of Jesus preaching that end times message in Matthew 24 lines up with Revelation chapter 6. He talked about false Christ. Revelation 6 talks about the Antichrist. He talked about wars and rumors of wars. Revelation 6 talks about red, red horse war. He talked about famines. You see the black horse of famine in Revelation 6. This will also be a famine of hearing the word of God that Amos 8.11 prophesies about. Now that's the first three seals. Now we're getting around the middle of the tribulation and you're going to have the covenant broken. He made the covenant with Israel. Now you're going to have him break the covenant. And now what we're going to enter is what you could call, you could label as the great tribulation. And this is the last half of the seven years. And this is when it really gets, I mean, the first half was bad. The second half is going to be really bad. The Antichrist is going to die and resurrect. Revelation 13 is the definitive chapter on the Antichrist. And in Revelation 13, 3 through 8, it says, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So you see the Antichrist, he's going to get a deadly head wound, but he's going to resurrect to counterfeit the Lord's Jesus Christ's resurrection. And it says in Zechariah 11, 7, Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. There's the head wound that he gets and he's going to die and he's going to resurrect and then he's going to this is this is a big one here he's going to go sit in the temple claiming to be God 2 Thessalonians 2 3 through 4 Paul said let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and I believe that falling away is a falling away at, during the tribulation time period even though there's a fall, you know, people's falling away in the church age, I believe this falling away here is during the tribulation period. And it says, And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So he resurrects, goes in that temple, claims to be God. And that's another way you know you're not going through the tribulation as it goes back to a physical temple, whereas your your body's the temple. Today, in this age, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, your body's the temple of the Holy Ghost. We don't have a physical building we go to as a temple. But then they will. And in 2 Thessalonians 2, 8 through 12, it says, and then shall that wicked be revealed. The See, what's going to happen is, during that, at the, when that second half of the tribulation comes up, Satan is going to enter into the Antichrist, just like he entered Judas Iscariot. And it says, and then shall that wicked, capital W, be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power 
and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned to believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now in connection with Matthew 24, you see this, uh, the Antichrist entering the temple, claiming to be God, this is in Ma not only in 2 Thessalonians, but it's also in Matthew 24. And Matthew 24, 15 through 16 says, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, and that's the Antichrist entering into the temple claiming to be God. It's the, he, he's the desolator. This is the abomination of the desolator. The abomination of desolation. And it's spoken of by Daniel the prophet as well, as it says. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then which be in, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. See, he's broke the covenant with them. Now they flee into the mountains. We're in the second half of the tribulation now. What people refer to and what Jesus said that during this time would be great tribulation so the first half you could label it the beginning of sorrows you had the antichrist showing up on a white horse that's the first seal you had the red horse that was war you had the third horse that was the black horse which is famine now you enter we're entering into the great tribulation so jesus says in matthew 24 21 for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time known or ever shall be. So the covenant is broken, putting us in the middle of the tribulation. Deceived Jews will find out that the Antichrist is fake because he's going to claim to be God when he sits in the temple. They will find out he's fake because of the mark of the beast and because they know they're not supposed to put any markings on their flesh. And that's what he's wanting them to do. And Revelation 13, 16 through 18. Revelation 13 goes right along with this. It's the definitive chapter on the Antichrist. And it says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. So there's the mark of the beast. He says, Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. It's the number of a man. His number is six hundred, three score, and six. So you got six, six, six. And they got to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And they're not going to be able to buy or sell unless they got the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And they also have to worship him too. And during this last half of the tribulation, you're also going to have the two witnesses show up. The two witnesses you're going to see in Revelation chapter 11. In Revelation chapter 11, 3 through 6, he says, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. So you see that? you're gonna, it gives, It's going to go back to men having these signs these sign gifts, the 144,000, most likely, they're going to have these sign gifts. The two witnesses are going to have the sign gifts like the apostles had, even more so in a way. And that shows you that God has once again went back to dealing with Israel because it's the Jews that require a sign, not Gentiles, the church. 1 Corinthians one twenty two says the Jews require a sign. What are you into here? The time of Jacob's trouble not the church's trouble, Jacob's trouble. Remember, Jacob is Israel, which are the Jews. So, it says, If any man hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. 
And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. You see, all this is pictured by Moses bringing the plagues on Egypt back there in Exodus. And it's, you're going you're gonna to be, people's going to be operating by sight. They're going to be seeing this stuff. You can read about it in Revelation and see it with your own two eyes. You see, it's God back dealing with Israel. And they're going to see the signs that the Bible is true. The two witnesses are most likely Moses and Elijah. You see, the devil and Michael disputed about the body of Moses in the book of Jude because they knew Moses was coming back. Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind to heaven without dying. Most likely, he's one of the two witnesses. And they already came back once when Jesus Christ was on the Mount of Transfiguration. And Elijah is even said to come back before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So Elijah and Moses both have powers that the two witnesses have that are described in Revelation 11. For example, turning water to blood. Elijah stops the rain. They're going to stop the rain. Smiting the earth with all plagues. That's what Moses did to Egypt back there in Exodus. And now during this time, you're going to see the fourth seal show up. The pale horse, which is death. Revelation 6, 7 through 10. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. So more war, more people starving, and people being killed with the beasts of the earth. You know, I'm sure your grandmother or somebody used to say that she believed the animals would come out of the woods in the last days. So if my if my grandpa hit a deer or something in the road, she would say, we're in the last days. The animals are coming out of the woods. And I don't think that's completely right, but, you know, the old older people, they get pretty close sometimes. It's not completely right because we're not in the tribulation right now, and this verse happens in the tribulation. Also, it doesn't seem like they would just be coming out of the wilderness but also that the fear of man is going to be taken off the animals they're going to be a lot more mean towards people and that's that's why it says he's going to kill he'll kill them with the beasts of the earth so animals the fear it seems like the maybe something like the fear of man will be taken off of them and they'll be a lot more mean and coming out attacking people so that's going to be a scary time. Then you got the fifth seal, saints martyred. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? You see, they're praying for the second coming where the Lord will come back and avenge their blood. You see, the saints are going to saint. There's going to be saints during that time, and the guys that do not believe in the pre-tribulation rapture will say, if there's a pre-tribulation rapture, then why are there saints in the tribulation that went through it? Well, that's because there's different classes of saints in the Bible. When we say that we're going out in the rapture, we're talking about the body of Christ, all born again believers from the, the ones that's already dead, the dead in Christ, and the ones that's still alive in Christ. We're going to be raptured out, but there's going to be people that get right with the Lord in the tribulation that are not in the body of Christ. They're still saints. It's just like a different class of saints. They're not in the body of Christ because, like I said, it goes back to God dealing with Israel. He's looking at a nation again. And in Revelation 7, you plainly see God dealing with Israel, but you also see people from other nations who get right with the Lord. And since it refers to them as, it's referring to them as Israel, but also referring to people from all other nations, you know, that's different from what we got going on today because today 
when you're a saint, you're neither, it refers to you as being neither Jew nor Greek. So you see the difference there. So there's going to be saints in the tribulation. So saying a pre-tribulation rapture can't take place because there's saints in the tribulation, that's a very weak argument. Of course there's going to be saints, but it's going to be like a different class of saints. They're not going to be part of the body of Christ. If, you've, if you make the saints and the tribulation part of the body of Christ, then you've got the body of Christ going through the tribulation. So that doesn't make sense either. And so the, that's the fifth seal. Saints martyred. And then during this time, you're going to have the trumpets. And the first trumpet, Revelation 8, 7 through 12, the first angel sounded, and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burned up, and all green grass was burned up. This proves that God isn't part of the green movement. He doesn't care about the trees. He's going to burn them all up. He doesn't care about your grass. It's getting burned up. You got some people, all they care about is their grass. If you ain't got your yard mowed looking good with no weed sticking up, they judge you. They almost act like you can't even be saved if your yard ain't looking good. God don't care about the grass. Then you got the second trumpet. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. Wouldn't you hate to be on a cruise at that time? A third part of the ships destroyed. The third, you can you see the third trumpet. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters, and the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. So notice the waters are made bitter and they're deadly. And I believe that, you know, like I said, there's going to be saints that's going to have the signs of the apostles and they'll be able to drink any deadly thing. So they could drink this water and it not hurt them. Just like in Matthew or in Mark 16, it talks about Jesus talks to the talking to the disciples. He says, These signs shall follow them that believe, and one of those signs is drinking any deadly thing. But then you've got the fourth trumpet, and the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and night likewise. So the phrase, are you afraid of the dark, takes on a whole new meaning. Not to mention, we're going to be creeping around in the dark at this time. You see, in the fifth trumpet some creatures that would be creeping around. Revelation 9, 1 through 5, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a the smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. So this will blow away any monster movie Hollywood ever came out with. Talk about complete terror and fear being in people. A much bigger catastrophe than what you saw with coronavirus. This is going to be big. It's going to be men's hearts filling them for fear 
And you've got the sixth trumpet, Revelation 9, 13. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand. And I heard the number of them. So you got a 200 million man army right here. And look at their description. And I saw the horses in the vision. And them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. And out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three were the third part of men killed by the fire and the, by the smoke and by the brimstone. Which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads. And with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of their works of their hands see that's the failure in this time even though all this comes on the world they fail to repent they repent not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which can ne which neither can see nor hear nor walk neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries nor of their fornication nor of their thefts you can imagine the terror this event will bring out of men Yet men are so hardened through sin that they still don't repent of the wickedness that they've done. This also proves that there are still going to be people around to murder, to commit sorceries, to commit fornication and steal things. Even though all these tragedies have come, there's still going to be people around. They'll be looting at an all-time high. People just got slaughtered by some angels. That they'll still be going in Foot Locker and get the, the latest new shoes that came out, most likely, because nothing changes. They're still going to be concerned with the gods of this world. They're still going to be concerned with fornicating, even after the horrible things that took place on the earth. This is because men are lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Next, you got the vials after the sixth trumpet. The first vial, Revelation 16, 1 and 2, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. This will be way worse than corona once again. This stuff will get in people's clothes. It will get in their houses. It's going to be probably like leprosy. All the big shots will have it because that's who takes the mark. Big shots. And then the second vial, Revelation 16, 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man. Every living soul died in the sea. When they could have... Let Jesus free, the Jews said, his blood be upon us and on our children. That is what they get during this time, is blood. You got the third vial, and the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the, the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shalt be, because thou hast judged us. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. So the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. It's a bloody time. It's going to be the bloodiest time the world's ever seen. And then you got the fourth angel, the fourth vial, and the fourth, Revelation 16, 8 and 9. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. So this is as close as it gets to hell on earth. The phrase, it's hotter than hell out here, is going to take on a whole new meaning. Mix this with there being a shortage of water and just blood everywhere. It's going to be a really nasty time. 
And you got the fifth vial, Revelation 16, 10, and 11. And the fifth angel sounded. And the fifth, no, and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. And his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain. And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. And repented not of their deeds. You see, that's the failure of man during this time. They still refusing to repent. Sixth vial. Revelation 16, 12 through 14. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. There's your satanic trinity. The, unclean, the, the dragon, which is the devil, the beast, the antichrist, and the false prophet. There's the satanic trinity. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. This is the gathering together of the nations to go against the Lord Jesus Christ at the second coming. And once again, the unclean spirits are shown to influence the kings of the earth. And around this time, the two witnesses will most likely be beheaded and raptured. The seventh vial, vial will bring in Armageddon. So when reading the book of Revelation, you're going to see at least four accounts of the tribulation, possibly even five. So just like the Gospels give you four accounts of the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, you at least got four accounts in the tribulation. And I think there's even one more after that. Most people teach four. But now notice how the seventh vial brings in Armageddon. And then we will see the sixth seal and seventh trumpet, which also do the same thing. Showing you that the events in, in the book of Revelation are not in chronological order. But it's just John giving, you, giving it to you in the order that he sees it, not in the order of how they happen. So... The seventh vial brings in Armageddon. And then you got the sixth seal and the seventh trumpet showing you Armageddon as well. Look at Revelation 16, 15 through 21. And behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Here's where you got the second coming, the Lord Jesus Christ coming down to take over. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hell out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hell. For the plague thereof was exceeding great. At this time, at that time, the sixth seal seems to be the second coming as well. That was the that was an account of the second coming. Now the sixth seal also, that right there was the seventh vial. The seventh angel put out his seventh vial there in Revelation 16. That showed you the Armageddon and the second coming. Revelation 6:12. The sixth seal is going to show you the second coming as well. And I beheld him when he had opened the sixth seal. And lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island was moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the day of his wrath is great." And who shall be able to stand? That's plainly the second coming. They're hiding from the Lord in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. The great day of his wrath is come. So you got the second coming there.
the seventh vial showed you the second coming, the sixth seal shows you the second coming, and the seventh trumpet also seems to bring in the second coming. You see, it's John showing you the same event from three from three uh, different accounts there, and you also have a fourth account of this in the book of Revelation, possibly even a fifth one. The seventh trumpet seems to bring in the second coming as well. Revelation 11, 15 through 19. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. So you see that? That's saying the kingdoms of our Lord are become the kingdoms, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, showing you he's came down, he's took over. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God in their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings, and voices, and thunderings, and an earthquake, and great hell. So, you had the seventh vial, showing you the second coming, the sixth seal showing you the end, the second coming, and the seventh trumpet showing you the end, the second coming. So that Revelation isn't in chronological order, but it's John pretty much telling you it in the order in which he saw it. But I'm not like super like dogmatic on these events taking place and this order as I've presented it to you in this lesson, but it's to give you an idea. Mostly this is just giving you an idea of what takes place during that future time. What are you going to see? Who are we dealing with during this time? It's God going back to dealing with the nation of Israel. That's what you see. It's not about the church. It's God's judgment on the nation of Israel for rejecting him.